Nathan, today we are talking about what is potentially the most exciting new set of vehicles coming shortly, a brand new tiny Toyota off-roader and the potential for a brand new tiny Jeep off-roader, but it's not what you're expecting. No, we're not talking about something like a Renegade, which is outgoing now. The Jeep Renegade was a soft-roader. These are a little bit more extreme. Yeah, something like the old-school Suzuki Samurai. Yeah. So these really compact, proper four-wheel drive vehicles that could potentially be had at a much lower price point than something like the full-size Bronco, the Jeep Wrangler. Um, and we're gonna tell you everything we need, we, we know about these uh, upcoming four-wheel drives and what we hope these are going to look like and what we hope these are gonna material, materialize like. That's correct. Now recently, Toyota has been on a bit of a kick and they have been putting out a whole bunch of concepts teasers and you name it about upcoming vehicles and many of those we've recently had an opportunity to play with including Tommy's opportunity when he got to play around with the brand new Land Cruiser. Yeah, really cool and that was a very interesting case because the Land Cruiser went from an 80 $90,000 three row SUV down to a much smaller, more compact 50, $60,000 SUV in the new 250 series, which abroad is called the Prado. And then a couple of years ago in 2022, Toyota teased this little guy. This is the Toyota Compact Cruiser. And it's a small, I do believe electric, four wheel drive with a perfectly squared off body, some proper ground clearance and real recovery points. Yes. Now, bear in mind, we're not talking exactly about this vehicle. However, this, I believe, and I think we believe, points the way towards a baby brother for the Land Cruiser. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Now, Toyota has a long history of making four-wheel drives, of course, and of various sizes. The original FJ40 Land Cruiser was very, very small compared to today's Products And then, of course, in the early 2000s to mid-2000s, we saw the launch of the FJ Cruiser, which was a much more affordable alternative to the 200 Series Land Cruiser, although not really that small. Um, and then, of course, that was discontinued a number of years ago, about 10 years ago. And now we're seeing Toyota talking about the potential for a new, even smaller four-wheel drive. So let's talk about what this thing could be. First of all, Nathan, there is a good chance that this is going to launch as a fully electric vehicle. That there is a good chance, but in addition, it could be a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Remember, Toyota's pushing real hard on the hybrid front. And that's what I really hope it is, is some kind of small four-cylinder hybrid, but with a proper four-wheel drive system and potentially even a low range so that you can really maximize the torque of that electric motor and that gasoline engine, give you some more control off-road. Now, it's probably gonna be independent suspension, but if they do this correctly, it may even have something like a rear locking differential. That's right. Now, for those of you who perhaps don't know, there's a company called Suzuki, and they make one of my favorite vehicles in the world, the Suzuki Samurai. Sorry, they made that. But now, its bigger brother is the Suzuki Jimny. And recently, they added a four-door version of this vehicle. Why is it special? Because it still has a frame, and it has solid front and rear axles. No, it's not sold here in the United States. Yes, it is sold in other countries. But there are an awful lot of people here who have a lot of interest in that vehicle. Given its wheelbase, which is much, much smaller than, say, a Jeep Wrangler, the fact is, is that this could be a much more maneuverable off-road vehicle. And recently, we've been hearing from Toyota and from other automakers that there's been a lot of interest in building a smaller, less expensive, serious off-road vehicle. So this Toyota, among others, could be similar to that Jimny, at least in size. And the Jimny is really what I think Nathan and I want here in the oh, States. Yes. You know, Suzuki left the U.S. a bunch of years ago. They kind of went out with a bang with the Kazashi, which was this weird Jetta thing. Yeah, yeah. It was with the CBT and some forms and everything. It was, actually, it wasn't a bad car, and they had some other decent cars. But the facts are, it's very hard to make it here in the States when you have such a small manufacturer not selling enough cars. And then a few years later, globally, they, they launched the new Jimny, which is, again, another nameplate that dates back decades and decades and decades. Um, and the new Jimny is exactly what we want, which is a really compact, proper off-roader with the low range and the axles, like you mentioned, Nathan. Um, now, I don't personally think that vehicle would have been able to crash or, or 
past crash safety. Maybe yeah. there were some emissions issues for the U.S. market. It would have taken some work to get that thing to be federalized. They should have done that work, though, because if that vehicle had an entry price of twenty to $25,000, they would have sold 100000 a year. Agreed, 100%. And once again, they now have a proper four-door version of it that's coming out. In addition, there was a concept, I believe, that may be leading to a little mini pickup version. And the two-door probably couldn't have been sold here due to the chicken tax, but now that they have that four-door, um, which I believe is made in India, and I could be wrong on that, but I believe that four-door is made in India, that would be such a popular vehicle in the States. Imagine like LA, beach towns in Florida, people just cruising around, even mountain towns, right? 25, 30,000 for the four-door, you're still at, in some cases, half the price of a Wrangler or a Bronco. With that being said, we all are being realistic. We are pretty much sure that that's not going to come here. Right. Uh, not through legal means, at least. But I think it gave the impetus to certain automakers to say, hmm, there is a real interest in this vehicle. Yeah. As such, once again, Toyota. And then there's another automaker that has been seriously talking about a diminutive little off-roader. So nothing official from Jeep, but we have heard some rumblings from within the community that Jeep may be working on a pint-sized version of the Wrangler. And like you mentioned, Nathan, we're not talking a Renegade, we're talking about like a top-off, full-fledged four-wheel drive at a much lower entry price. Now, we already know Jeep is officially on route with the Recon, which is Wrangler-sized, fully electric, also has removable doors and that kind of thing. But we're talking about a class lower, a class that doesn't currently exist in the US, something that's like the size of a Mini Cooper, but with four seats and a proper four-wheel drive. That is something that we should all look forward to. Look at it this way. If you look back, oh, going back to ooh, World War II, you'll find that the Willys, um, or Willis, depending on how you want to mm -hmm. pronounce it, um, the wheelbase on that vehicle is almost identical to the two-door current version of the Jimny. Mm. Think about that. And they're able to pack all that tech into a vehicle that is, granted, not very fast, but very capable off-road. Now, Fast forward to what Americans can do for their consumers. A lot of people are upset about the fact that you cannot afford a off, proper off-roader. The base price right now for a Jeep Wrangler Sport, like the very base model, is still around thirty plus. I Realistically, believe. it's going to yeah. be over thirty. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's really hard to get something that is seriously off-road capable. But what if you wanted something that was a more frugal, b cheaper? and C, just as capable off-road. Well, I think Jeep has seriously explored this. And there was a memo put out a couple years ago, early Stellantis time, stating that they were looking at building a vehicle that was smaller than the Wrangler, but just as capable. I do remember that. I think that was may have been FCA era. Maybe, I think, I thought it was the transition time. And, well, I haven't heard of anything about that recently, which yeah. is a little alarming, but there was like a picture that showed like the outline of future products and there did appear to be like a little teeny tiny Wrangler on one of those pictures. Um, didn't show any detail, just like the silhouette of what it could be. Right. Now, hopefully, here's my thing. I'm a big fan of electrification. Um, I do love daily driving an EV. I do hope that to keep that price around the 20,000, instead of going electric, it's some basic four-cylinder maybe not even a turbo, just a naturally aspirated, super cheap, you know, give me 110 horsepower just to do 70 miles an hour, and that's it, right? Four-wheel drive, take the top off, maybe some air conditioning. That would sell like hotcakes. You know, I, I know that the prices are getting more and more expensive and the margins are a lot more difficult on these little tiny um, cheaper cars, but there's such a desire within the marketplace for a way cheaper alternative to what we see on the road today. You are 100% correct. And in addition to that, throw into the mix how well the Chevy Trax is selling right now. Oh, now I know I, yeah. totally out of right field, I know. But think about it. This is a three-cylinder turbo that's extremely efficient. Granted, it is only front drive. However, that type of powertrain can be adopted to all-wheel drive. It is not in the market right now for off-roading. But my point is that is a car that's well-equipped, Around the twenty thousand dollar mark to start with, I think it's twenty two thousand dollars is its base price, yeah. and it is a properly good car. I stand by that. I think it's great. Yes, of course, it's going to take time to see whether or not it's reliable because that three cylinder turbo people are a little concerned about. But my point is, you can still build inexpensive vehicles, and good sales on that car show that people are interested in it. So, 
having off-roaders that are very simple for people out there who do not have a lot of money, I think is a great idea because you want to bring in those Conquest sales. And that Trax was such a was one of the best vehicles I drove last year. I mean, for the price point, the amount of value um, features in that vehicle, I would say strip some of those features out to save some money, strip the top off and give it four-wheel drive, and you would, I mean, with some more capability, yeah. you would have such a winner on your hands. Um, and like you said, Nathan, there's just been so much excitement and interest over that track. So a cheap car finally done right. So mm -hmm. clearly the market is in demand for vehicles that the average American can afford, and I really hope that both Toyota and potentially Jeep, if they go that route, does it does it correctly. Now, there are some other automakers that are shrinking down some of their vehicles that are coming to market as well. And that would include Ineos and Rivian. They're yeah. both proposing, if not showing very soon, good one. Yeah. Uh, vehicles that will be able to compete that are physically a lot smaller. Granted, they're going to be a lot more expensive than what we're talking about. But usually when you downsize, prices tend to come down. Yeah, right. And like the R2 that they launched a couple weeks back, that's going to start like in the mid to high 40s. And then they showed the R3, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic all-electric. Brilliant looking. Looks like a little Delta Integrale or like a Mark I Rabbit, but lifted. Um, I would suspect maybe mid-30s starting, no official pricing. But yeah, they're on the right direction with that car. They really got a lot of people excited. I agree. So I'm wondering what you guys think. Do you think downsizing is the way to go? I know a lot of Americans prefer bigger, which is why vehicles are growing. Safety concerns, sure. extra goodies, all these other things, being able to hold the whole family. But are some of you out there willing to have a vehicle that can only hold four people really tightly, mm -hmm. but at the same time have a little bit of off-road capability? Let us know in the comments below. Right, and historically, you know, Fiat with the 500 didn't do very well with the tiny vehicle. Mini, in certain categories, does struggle with a tiny vehicle. But I think if you give it a true four-wheel drive and take the top off, people would be pretty stoked. But Nathan, you're right. Give us a, a comment below. Um, be sure to hit that like button and head over to alltfl.com if you want to find more videos like this. Have a good one, guys. We'll Thanks. see you next time. Appreciate it.